Throughout history, there has been a lot of race mixing and interracial marriage. Yet God Almighty said in his word, his truth, and it was his command, you should stay with your own kind. He commanded it. I do not feel comfortable around Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindu, atheists, blacks, browns, churchgoers, New Agers, Asians, and even white people. I'm white. Why would I feel uncomfortable and not trust other white people? I'll show you shortly, and I'm sure that you will understand. I do not feel comfortable around anyone but one particular people. The tiny group of people that walk this earth that are the same family as me. They are of God Almighty. Yet we are taught by our Father that we should live peaceably as we, as much as we can around all men if possible. This means this, this does not mean becoming friends with those that are contrary to God and Jesus. It means we try to avoid trouble. We try to be decent. We try to, to live by what's called the golden rule of the words of Jesus Christ. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But this does not mean that Jesus Christ wants us to go and buddy up and pal around with people that hate him. But yet, the churches and society will tell you this is exactly what you should do. And you know who a lot of those people are? They're white people. They got my hair color, my hair eyes, the color of my eyes, the color of my hair, my skin, just like you. In the history of white people, white men and white women have interbred and married outside of white races for a long time. It's ancient, folks. There are nations that have literally had their bloodlines and their identity changed forever because of it. Let me give you two examples. Spain and Portugal, 400 and 500 years ago, were both white nations. They look like you and me. They look like 1800s Tennessee. You understand? White. In the last couple hundred years, there's been so much interracial mixing that these nations have taken on a new identity. Now, there will be some who will say this is a good thing. If it's a good thing, why did God tell us not to do it? If it's a good thing, is it possible that it can even be wrong to marry or procreate with even people of your own race? That means if two white people, could it be wrong even to marry or procreate with somebody that's white? It surely can, but why? If we're to stay with our own kind, what did God mean by stay with your own kind? Did he mean just race or did he go deeper? Let's go deeper ourselves. In fact, let's keep going out to the, to the middle of the ocean. Most of you are white. Have you ever had a white person as your enemy? Have they ever tried to hurt you or take from you? Of course. You know they have. But who are they and why? Folks, all of us have done wrong. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short. And it's at times we have been rotten people. All of us, man. Then the Father calls you to his truth, his truth and his ways. And you change. And once you change, you stay that way. You've been born again, man. Yet reality is this. Some people... White people are born bad, and they stay this way. I have a white enemy. I cannot call them hillbilly because hillbillies are my people. The term comes from the Scots and some Europeans who came to America and felt so out of place in the eastern cities and towns, they moved to the hills and the mountains of, of Appalachia. These are my people. I cannot call my white enemy redneck, for I have some redneck in me. You know, my old Jeep is white, but my neck is red. The term redneck comes from the white Irish who worked the fields and around the necks would get burned. Therefore, they came to be called redneck. These are my people. What name would I use for white people that hate me and hate you and hate our Father and hate Jesus Christ? What name should they be called? I'm going to show you. You see, now these terms redneck and hillbilly are used by our enemy to describe white people who do not cater to the beliefs of this world. I have defended white people. I understand the pain. I know the masses have come against you for being white. However, I'm telling you, there's something bigger and deeper going on here. 
The devil has a seed on this earth, and many of his children look like you and I. They have our hair color, eyes, hair texture, our features. A few of you are going to understand some truth today about white people and those who are posing as white people. I'm going to show you a couple different types of white people. And in the end, you do with it what you want to do with it. One of the comments I used to see a lot from people on BitChute when I first joined is that we must preserve the white race. And this comes from the Hitler people and some of the other people. And I understand it, you know, to a point when there's so many people against you, you feel like you should preserve the white race. But it's kind of like today we're going to the middle of the ocean deep and these people were frolicking in like the kiddie pool because they can't go further. They just... To go further, you got to have something. And I'm going to show you what that is. And if you don't have that, you'll spend your life in the kiddie pool. And you'll frolic, you know, you'll splash, but you're just going to stay in the kiddie pool. And that's where these people are. They would say that all white people are Israelites. They say the first white man was Adam. Well, Adam was white. I believe that. But were there other white people here before Adam? It's a huge question. I don't have the answer for you. I don't think any of us do. I tend to believe there were other white people here distinct from Adam. Because what made Adam and Eve different? I'm going to show you what made them different. I know the ancient Israelites were white. Abraham, he had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. The father changed Jacob's name to Israel. And from these people came the Israelites. I'm an Israelite. Many of you are Israelites, but there's a couple different kind of Israelites. However, are all white folks really Israelites and of God? Hear me now, good people. Let me ask you something, and I ask you to refute the statement I'm going to make if you can. I'll say it tactfully and truthfully. Right now, there are rapists, pedophiles, murderers, thieves, liars, and men and women who would come in your house and take your life and not blink, man. We've all seen people like this. There are people that abuse their children. They beat the hell out of their wives. They beat their animals. They torture. They do evil. They worship the devil. And guess what? A huge amount of them are white. They're white, man. You can't get away from it. So if the nonsense that you hear some of these Hitler people, some of these Christian identity people, that we're all one big white racial family, let me ask you, do you want to be, to? would you like those people to be a part of your family? Do you think God Almighty, as he looks down and says, out of a hundred white people, if 80 of them are pedophiles, rapists, murderers, thieves, liars, and are beaten and evil and cruel, do you think God says those 80 get a pass because they're white? There are fools that believe this, man. Let me say it again, folks. The devil has a seed on this earth. Many of his children look like you and I. They have our hair, eyes, and features. The goal of the devil from the very beginning to 2,000 years ago and even now was to mingle his seed with the seed of the one true father. In fact, the devil would try to infiltrate nations using people that look like the original Israelites. This was hard at times because of the obvious differences in physical appearances. However, when breeding with Israelites, which was forbidden by our father, they could change their appearance by slowly becoming and looking just like us. But there's something else missing. What's the other component? Now, as we get ready to learn some answers to what we've discussed here today, I want to say a word to you about knowledge and sacred knowledge and real knowledge. From the ancient days until now, people want answers to the answers to the mysteries of this life. From ancient scrolls, books, potions, and even folks who want to make deals with the devil, they want to learn the truth, is what they say. They'll do almost anything to learn the truth. People have sailed oceans, climbed mountains, and braved the deserts all in the quest of the elusive answers to this life. Who are we? Where do we come from? Why are we here? And is there a God? At no other time in the history of mankind 
that I know of has men and women been so desperate to have knowledge and so completely ignorant of who and what has the answers. What does God Almighty, our Father, and His Son Jesus have to say, for theirs is the only truth? Our Father gave His children explicit instructions to stay with your own kind. What kind? The skin color kind, or was it something else? God says that a demonic race is upon this earth. The seed of a serpent is real, even though liars and deniers try to downplay it. Genesis 3, 14, 15 proves all this, and throughout the scriptures we see these two families at war. Jesus speaks on this. He spoke on it. Let me show you something amazing, and you take time to read this with me. It's not long, but it's worth for us to read. The Son of God, the King of Kings, Jesus, was preaching by the seaside 2,000 years ago. And one of the most powerful truths you will ever hear about this world and who is who, because that's what it comes down to is who is who. Now, Jesus is preaching about the sower. However, he moves on and he takes his disciples, you and me, much deeper in the truth of who is of God and who is of the devil. So, no life jackets allowed. We're going a little bit further out into the middle of the ocean. We're going to drop anchor. And we're going to learn the truth. Now, friends, I'll turn your attention to the screen. And we read just a few verses from Matthew chapter 13. And I want you to pay attention. Because then we're going to ask ourselves, who's really who? First of all, as Jesus is preaching, he says this. And Matthew, and I'm not going to read the entire chapter. I'm just going to read certain verses. But I want you to understand what he says from the very beginning that he lets the people know. Look. It's not for everybody. And the disciples came and said unto Jesus, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Jesus answered, verse 11, He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So he tells them, Listen, it's not for everybody. He tells them, it's not for everybody. Listen, this is not for everybody. You see, this truth that Jesus is talking about is not for everybody. You see, he's telling you right there that his words are not for everybody. His teachings are not for everybody. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven is for the people that are his. Well, how do you know if you, are, if you belong to Jesus? Well, folks, let's stay in the same chapter here, chapter 13, and we're going to read the parable of the wheat and the tares. We're not going to read it all, but I want you to stay with me here now because this is important. Now, this is Jesus Christ telling you the truth of who's who. And then when you start to look around in the old world today, you'll start to understand who are these white people that hate you and me? Who are these white people that hate God? They hate Jesus Christ and say the Bible's corrupt, it's all a lie, and then Jesus' name isn't really, is it? what are they really called? Let me show you what Jesus Christ called them. Let me let, let me let the King of Kings, let me say his words and he'll teach us what they really are. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. The tares. You see, it might look like the wheat, but if you look closely, it has a tear in it. It has a tear in it. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like the wheat on closer inspection. What does that mean for us? Well, when you take two white people and put them side by side, and if you look closely, what is it that you can, how do you distinguish the tear from the wheat? I'll show you in just a second. 27, so the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in, in the field? Then where then has it, where do these tares come from? He said unto them, an enemy has done this. The servants said unto him, will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, no, lest you gather up the tares, you root up the wheat with them. 
You see, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn, into his house. You see, the tares get burned. The wheat gets, back, gets gathered into his barn. He's going to keep the wheat. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, and they want to know. Master, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. They want to know this truth, man. You see, these men walked this earth. They knew there were people around them that were evil. They knew there were people that were evil. They knew the synagogue was Satan. They knew there were people posing as Israelites that weren't Israelites. Now listen to what Jesus says in chapter, excuse me, in verse 37. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is, is, is the son of man. You see, that's the good seed, the son of man, Jesus. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. It's pretty powerful, man. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. And it shall cast them into a furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So after reading that, we see that there are people that are evil. They will look like you and me. They are called the tares in the wheat. And in the field, we see around us is filled with mostly tares. If you look at the world right now, you're looking at a lot of tares, man. So I asked you earlier, how do you distinguish between these people? How do you tell who's a tear? It's simple, good people. We learn from the fifth page of the Bible of the serpent seed, a race of evil that is spread over this earth. We learn from God's word and his spirit shows us these people. I have never said that our father can only love white people. It's just not true. It's, it's a lie. Nobody can tell God who he can love, man. Nobody. If God wants to love anybody, it's God's to do. It's God's love, man. God can love anybody he chooses. Does God only love white people? Not hardly, man. There have been other people that God has called and said, you belong to me now. What did God give them? What did God give them? Yes, he gave us all Jesus, but what did he give us, man? What makes us different? What makes us different? First Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4.1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, talking about the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Spirit says, not the flesh, that in the last days people will depart from the real faith and they will follow evil spirits that, sed that seduce and doctrines of devils. Let's go further, shall we? John 18, 13, we've talked about this before. Pontius Pilate is having this conversation with Jesus. And he says, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answers and says, Thou sayest I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. 
every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. To hear the truth of Jesus, what, what do you have to have? What do you got to have, man? What do you, is it, is it your flesh? Is it your hair color? Your eye color? Maybe your skin, huh? Nope. What is it? What do you got to have, man? Got to have a spirit of God. If you ain't got a spirit of God, you don't have nothing. You're null and void, man. John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. But the hour cometh. These are the words of Jesus now. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Are, are you ready now? Now he just said, Jesus says, the true worshipers shall worship who? Jehovah Father in what? Spirit and in truth. And he, then he says, for the Father is even looking for those to worship him like that. In 24, Jesus says this, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's go further. John chapter 6, verses 63. The words of Jesus Christ. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Wow. Hold on now. So Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. This is what gives you life. This is what teaches you. This is what moves you. This is what guides you. The spirit, the flesh profits nothing. Nothing. Your flesh is going back to the earth, man. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. John 8, 47, he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. You see, the true Israelites today are easy to identify and distinguish. They are the lovers and followers of Jesus. And if God wants to call any other man or woman from the four corners of this earth to be his son or daughter, it's his business and nobody dare tell God what he can and cannot do. But this is what some of these people do. The asylum inmates do not know the Father. You see, they are, they are in an institution of lies and, and BS. And they believe they know more than God, you see. They believe the Bible has been altered. It's got 10,000, 20,000 mistakes, and they got to have special teachers who, to, who can explain to them what this really means, what's that. They rewrite the Bible. This is why they don't use the name Jesus. They call him many names they learn on the Internet from the synagogue of Satan. Sometimes they call him Christ, but they never use the name Jesus. Let me ask you something. Every man, woman, and nation and or group has something they hold as dear and worth preserving. Let me share with you what I hold first and foremost is dear, and you tell me if this resonates with you. If there is one thing worth preserving, defending, and promoting, it is the love, honor, and respect that are due to our Father and His Son, Jesus. You see, before my skin and my heritage, before all that, before the nation, before my brothers and sisters, there's the Father in Jesus, man. Jesus is your king. He is your family. We are not strangers to him. We are a family. You see, that's what's worth preserving. That's what's worth defending and talking about is what's due to your Father in Jesus, that family, your heavenly family, your spiritual family. Those who preach the truth are called radicals and dissenters. Brethren, this is what they called your king when he came to this earth being born of a woman. He told us to prepare to be hated by the same sadistic monsters for his namesake because we belong to him. For the truth is, the enemy has weapons, power, money, soldiers, followers, and technology that makes our most of our weapons look like mere sticks and stones. Yet you have a weapon more powerful than anything they could ever have. 
you have your Father in Jesus Christ. Man, you need nothing else today, tomorrow, or any other time. We're never alone. There has never been a moment in your life that your Father in Jesus did not know exactly where you were, what you were doing, and what you were going through. We've always been loved. Our Father loves us more than we understand. As we go forward, try to stay around people that are like-minded because they have the same spirit. Because they may look like you or may say some words that are similar to you, remember, if you really want to know who they are, man, you got to look at their spirit, what lives inside of them. Because what's inside of them, you will find out what kind of fruit they produce. Is it rotten or is it of God Almighty? And you may have to pray about it and ask Father, hey, who is this person? What is this person about? And you pray and you ask your Father, who is this person? Because we need to stay away from people that are not like us. Jesus gave us the command in Matthew 7, 6. Do not cast your pearls before swine, lest they turn and rend you. It means lest they, they turn and gore you. Do not cast your, do not give that which is holy unto the dogs. You see, they may look like you, man. They may talk like you. They may say, hey, we're one big white racial family, but they don't have a spirit of God in them. If they ain't got a spirit of God in them, they're not your brother and sister. Take it any way that you like. Let's stop for today in Jesus' name. Let's give all the praise to the one true Father for this knowledge in the name of his beloved Son. I love you, Almighty Father. I love you, sweet Jesus. I'll see you good people soon. Praise the Father in Jesus' name. Seek his face. Seek his love. Seek, seek his protection. And do it all in the name of the name that the Father said is above every name. And that name is Jesus. That's who we are. This is who we are because we have a spirit of God in us. May the Father bless each and every one of you in the name that's above all names. His name is Jesus. Thank you for watching.